Hello, neuroposthetians. I'm very excited to be here with Dr. Gabriel Rota. How are you today, Gabriel? Hello, Justin. I'm fine. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm happy to be here and to speak about practical neuroplasticity. Your work is such um, su such a great uh, trove of expertise, uh, Gabriel. So let's let's just dive straight in. Tell us about your work and tell us about what it means to have tools around practical uh, neuroplasticity. This is so important to our community of neuroplasticians and coaches and educators and consultants. But as neuroplasticians, practical is everything. So throw us in the deep end, Gabrielle. Tell us about your work and tell us about you. Well, thank you so much. Actually, the first time I came across neuroplasticity was in the 80s. Uh, actually, we were to told by a biology teacher that this is a new um, science. And I was really so, so uh, excited about that to see that actually our brains are changing all the time and uh, that this means a lot for changing mm. as a person. For, for uh, achieving your goals in order to adapt your habits and, yeah. and routines. So actually, I, I have, I've, I've had this in the back of my mind for many, many, many years. And then at the turn of the century, I started to read more and more about it. And uh, um, I studied with uh, Professor Roth in Germany, one of the well-known yes. uh, um, neuroscientists. Unfortunately, he died at the age of 80 last year, but I've mm. been working closely together with him until just a few days before he passed away. And also, um, uh, I did work with, uh, and I do still work with Mark Waldman, one of the leading new researchers in this field. Mm, uh, I've, actually got, I've actually got him on the podcast tomorrow. So when we finish with this, I will send it to him and say, look, you're already famous in the NPN hub, but he is so interesting. Let's 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 speak about the salience network and the default network and speak about how this becomes practical in the in the application of neuroplasticity. I think Dave is an awesome expert in this field, but let's speak about the practicalities of it. That's what really counts, isn't it? Okay, I mean, just to say a few things, the salience network is actually the one that really enables us to use all our networks at the best. Right. So, um, usually in, during the day at work, we are in our executive network and this takes a lot of energy and then we are really focused, but we are not really able to, to, um, to really use all the pos all the uh, capacities which we have in our brain and um, a few a few um, a little time ago one uh, research showed that actually um, when we are in silence when we are relaxed then our brain is really active and this is the default mode network and their imagination all kinds of things are going on they're very very important ones and so Actually, in order to um, to use the emotional network, the thinking network, the, the salience network, um, all the networks, we need to be in a relaxed, mindful state. And this is actually all about the practicalities now I want to talk about. because well, Before are... you do, before you do, I want to just get a definition of the salience network. So I understand the prefrontal cortex, cognitive network, I understand the emotional network. I understand the default network, as you just said. And what does the salience network mean? What is your working definition for the practicalities of this, Gabrielle? Actually, I can use the salience network. I can reach it by calming down and um, relaxing. Mm -hmm. And one of the best strategies is to just breathe or even yawn. This is the most yes. Easy. To get into this um, kind of state and then you um, just listen to your inner voice you to your intuition and this that what is popping up the salient things that come up then this so you're only just talking about it isn't that so interesting exactly <laughs> So uh, th this is actually where the salience network is at work and using 
um, all the re all the connections to the default mode network, to the executive network. So this is where everything comes together, where it's in balance and where we can make best use of it, of our brain. Mm. Wow. And I in think order this is such interesting work. Please carry on. Yeah. So when do we use this? I mean, we I use it personally um, as often as I can or as often as I remember or as often as my mindfulness bell uh, reminds me to do this. So um, there are days when I happen to do this like every hour and then I would really put myself into a rela uh, relaxed mindful um, um, state of mind by yawning, by stretching oh. and by rolling my head very, very slowly, micro, micro movements, just paying attention where there is some pain, where there is some awkward feeling, stop for a moment before I move on. And this is the way that my body relaxes, my mind is calming down and where I am able to observe What's going on in my inner speech, in my default mode network? There, where that's what we, what's going on unconsciously, um, all during the day. And now, in this kind of situation, I can also go deeper. And being in the salient network, this is also called the value network. This is where our deepest um, essence is so we are looking for answers when we ask what is my most important my deepest inner value and i simply in this state of mind i simply listen to what's coming up what's popping up mm -hmm. so for this point uh, at this point in time actually i did it before i entered our call and for me um, what was very important is trust, trust, trust to say the things that are important right now, trust that the understanding takes place, trust to, um, to connect with you and the audience and the people who are interested in it. And another word that came up to me was love and love means for me, actually, I really want to open up and give whatever I can give and receive whatever is important for me to receive. So just a personal example. Um, now, the we, what we do is, um, as the 12 strategies that we use in this um, neuro coaching, is that we first get ourselves into this mindful, relaxed state, then we observe our inner speech, and then we focus on a deep relational uh, value or maybe a deep work-related value, depending on the situation we are in. How long does it take? What is the normal uh, window? How long does it take? Well, usually if I do it for myself, it is within a minute. It is. Can, done you, do, can you do it with me? Can you, can you coach me through it? Sure, super. Okay, so, let me get sit. Let me sit properly. So, Justin, mm -hmm. let's just get in a relaxed, mindful state of mode, and okay. we do this by you can keep your eyes open or closed. That doesn't matter. Just the way you relax, you 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 think it's best for you, and then you take a deep breath or a deep yawn, which has shown to really relax the brain immediately. Take another deep breath and maybe stretch a little bit, roll your shoulders and you feel how you sit on your chair. You feel the weight of your body And as you do this, you listen to your inner voice 
observe your inner speech and ask your intuition, what is my most important value right now? Or what is important to you? Anything that pops up, which is right now in this very moment important to you. If you believe that there is still a lot of noise going on, let's take another breath. Let's take another yawn. Stretch. And ask your intuition, what is your innermost value, thought, sensation that's popping up? Would you like to share this with me? Mm -hmm. I think this is excellent stuff. I, mean, I love it. I love it. I think it really makes a lot of sense. For me, the word that comes up is value. So the value of value, if I'll be so linguistically clever. But for me, it is about showing, having, being of value. So I, I really want to be of value. I suppose that's what I what I what I really want to speak into. Wonderful. So that's what comes up for me. Super. Listen, let's savor this feeling. This feeling of I want to be of value. I am of value. So this is a very positive, pleasant experience right now mm. just take another deep breath stretch or yawn and go deeper again and ask your intuition is there anything else another important thought sensation popping up The first thing that comes up is the the joy of this. I think it's such a such a good protocol. I really do. I think it's very valuable. So I'm in I'm in the candy store. I love it. So the the second thing well, there's actually two more things. The one is sleep hygiene and the link between yawning and sleeping. I don't know that, and I'm sure. That's something we can discuss with Mark or with you. I don't really mind. But yawning often doesn't happen when you're tired. So I'd like to understand the mechanics of it and how that gets you more salient. So that is something I'd like to play with in my neuro nerdy brain. Wonderful. And that's something from, and then the other thing that comes up, you know. It is, it is about integrity, and it's not integrity in the general sense. It's more integrity around building a community of expert learners. Not expert, not learners, but people who are experts in learning. Because if you're learning properly, you're kind of 
you, you kind of get neuroplasticity. So and the integrity is trying to build a community of people like you and Mark, but not necessarily on the top end of expertise, but just knowing how to learn. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. You know, listening to you, you have now expressed three very important things to you in this very moment. And this is on the one hand side, the value of being, being of value. So savoring this and then moving on to the value of joy. There is deep joy coming up when you think of this. And the third that came up besides the sleeping hygiene and, 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 and yawning was this integrity of forming a community of experts in learning to change by using the capability of neuroplasticity in order to move, grow as an individual as well as a community and society in the end. So a few more strategies that we use in order for you to even dig deeper into what you want is that we really try to speak slowly. So the two, and, the two of us, we automatically become really active, interacting in a dialogue. So then we are more on the cognitive, more on the on the executive um, um, executive network level. So actually, as we want to retrain really to be in the salience, we speak slowly and we speak warmly and we speak briefly, which is so hard for us. Mark said I must use less than 12 words when speaking. Exactly. So let's practice this while we continue our conversation. It's hard to do it and speak warmly, Gabrielle. Yes, I can understand. I have gone through this myself. It is such a blessing to be with you, Gabrielle. What other practical tools do you have up your sleeve? Is this one? Yes. Besides observing how you speak, I also pay attention to your facial expressions. I love this work. There is a guy called Paul Ekman. Um, who has done some work around facial affect coding. Do you know his work? Is this related? I know his work, and I think it is a little bit limited in terms of what we know nowadays. Um, I use facial expressions in doing assessments based on neurobiological studies. I would like to tell you about Professor Roth and his ad personam diagnostics, wow. where, where we use facial expressions as once as a sign, as a symptom leading us back that there is something in the subconscious, in the unconscious, that, that we don't know what it is, but we know that there is something in this very moment. So assessing people, observing the facial expression, when I am used and practiced to read the facial expression, I can see that the subconscious or unconscious gives a sign. And I, I love this. Sorry for interrupting. 
I've got a huge interest in this personally. I have been reading about neuroception and the pre-conscious defaults of the brain, but I think it would be really fun and valuable for the neuroplasticians to sit at a round table with you and learn more about what this what this can work as a tool, what these tools can offer. Would you be up for that, Gabrielle? Of course. I am very much interested in interacting and exchanging experiences and ideas with all of you. Well, we want to learn from you as well as share ideas. So let's let's close down today because we'll never stop otherwise. And um, let's find a time to host the round table. It would be such a blessing to have further conversation with you, Gabriel. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Justin. It was a pleasure being here with you and just give you a glimpse of what we were doing. We're going to have so much fun together. Thank you, Gabriel. Speak soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.